guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I have found a little bit of a woodsy scene because guess what? I got an SUV with some extra woodsy capability. This is it. This is a 2023 Nissan Pathfinder, but guess what? This isn't your regular Pathfinder. It's the return of the Rock Creek Edition. But before we get into this more off-road worthy three-row midsize SUV from Nissan, let's talk about what's going on here. Nissan is still going through that renaissance, changing vehicles with redesigns and refreshes in their lineup from the Nissan Z to the Pathfinder, the Frontier, and of course, introducing new vehicles like the upcoming Aria. The Pathfinder, we already brought to you here on Radies Rides, did the review out in Montana. It was snowing, and we were the first to show you this Rock Creek edition from this year's New York Auto Show. Well, now is the time where Nissan has thrown us the keys so that we could go on throttle together in this vehicle. Now, when you're looking at mid-size SUVs, there's a lot of competition, especially those that want to bring a little bit of off-road worthiness to their lineup. What are two competitors that we're gonna look at going up against this Pathfinder? Of course, we can't forget about the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. That was something that was new a couple years ago where they added a third row to the Grand Cherokee platform, but also the Ford Explorer Timberline Edition. So let's go ahead, let's dive into this Pathfinder Rock Creek Edition, see what's different, and see which is the better one to buy for your hard-earned money in a midsize three-row SUV. Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, the shape. With this generation of Pathfinder, they really did a great job making it look more muscular, Starting at the front end, like we've shown you on the other trims of the Pathfinder, you're getting that all new headlight design. LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps. The only zonk are the old fashioned light bulb turn singles. But I do love the shape and I love the way they incorporate the actual fender as it wraps into the front fascia. Working your way down, we got flat black, but guess what, it's all plastic nothing here to make it functional. So I wish they would have done something a little bit more creative than just doing a fake vent and some kind of bar in the center. But I am glad that it's flat black because as you go off-road, this plastic will definitely take a better beating than it being gloss black or painted. Now, as we come across the front grille, this is one of the things that on this generation, I fell in love with all over again because I remember the original Pathfinder all the way back in the 1980s. We got that simulated openings in the top portion of the grill. That's to make that connection with the Pathfinder of the past. I wish they would have made those functional, but I do like the silver that they dropped in on this Rock Creek Edition. That's something specific. You have gloss black in the center, but the great news is it's functional. We got the updated Nissan badge and a forward-facing camera which is very important no matter what kind of off-roading that you're doing. And then to wrap it off, we have that gloss black V-Motion grill. You see the V right there? That is part of the design philosophy of this iconic Japanese brand. And for the Rock Creek Edition, it's all blacked out. Looks really clean. This whole lower section is all Rock Creek. So we have flat black, the silver around the perimeter, and I'm so glad that they did fog lamps. LED fog lamps on both sides with that functional area. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, did they really do anything else besides aesthetics to this Rock Creek Edition? This actually sits 5 eighths of an inch higher than your standard Pathfinder. So it's gonna give you a little bit more ground clearance underneath. And of course, we have four by four all wheel drive capability with this vehicle. Now, when we get up onto the hood, same hood as your standard Pathfinder, but that's not a bad thing. Nice and wide, very bold, very muscular. If you look at the previous generation, especially the Rock Creek Edition, that thing was a jelly bean. It was all rounded. It didn't really have any substance. This one definitely brings the style and the substance. Now, when we go around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. So you're gonna get these unique Rock Edition wheels. 18 inch wheel. I like the way they did the simulated beadlock design around the machine aluminum part and then you're gonna get the gloss black Y spoke in the center. If you're wondering, well, Joe, do we have off-road tires? You better bet your bottom dollar. We got these Toyo Open Country off-road tires. They actually have protection on the sidewall, so you're not gonna get any kind of penetration 
from little rocks or pieces of wood or whatever you're driving over. And like I said, I like the way the 18 inch wheel looks. 285 on the width, 60 series sidewall. And you'll notice that, like I said, that sidewall protection. Now, this being an off-road worthy SUV, I don't mind the flat black plastic. Normally I like to see this painted, but I think it looks extra good being flat black all the way around the fender opening. We work our way down. You are going to get painted mirror caps that are black, and that goes nicely with the two-tone roof design. So we got that beautiful ruby red with the black roof. Rock Creek badging, they did a great job with that. I like the style. You got the little rock, little set of rocks there. Nice, clean, it's not too high, it's not right in your face. Flat black along the bottom with the Pathfinder name. We got color matched on the door handles. And then part of this addition, you get from the factory this tubular roof rack that could support over 200 pounds. And as you can see, this is the Rock Creek Edition as you're off-roading. That's what it's gonna look like. Just to give you a little early bird's eye view. We do have crossbars, so you can put your cargo basket up there, your kayak holder, canoe holder. Maybe there's somebody in your family that's just annoying you on the family trip. Just strap them up there, because they can handle plenty of weight. Now, working your way towards the back, I love on this generation how the fender starts to flare out in the passenger door and then go nicely into the rear fender area. Even the way they did the rear pillar here is to kind of be a throwback to the triangular window on the original Pathfinder. So this is something that not only looks good, but it also has that connection with the Pathfinder of the past. Working our way towards the rear, when we come around out back, you can see the cool shape to that tubular roof rack, especially how it doesn't come near your shark fin antenna. We got a stubby, Roof spoiler, can't do anything with this, so I would like the Zonka, but there's really not a lot of room to get it out of the way. We got the updated LED taillights, looking good. The Pathfinder name in the center, nice and bold. And I actually am glad, as this big jet flies over us, that's actually Carlos Ghosn flying to the United States after being in Lebanon, the old CEO of Nissan for so many years. He actually is landing here at Tampa International. But anyways, he came to see this vehicle. Rock Creek Edition, I actually don't mind the badging. It looks really clean, especially because it's flat black, like the Pathfinder name. And then working our way all the way down, you got your full towing capability, straight from the factory. And like I said, clean ground clearance, no exhaust hanging down, nothing that's gonna get ripped off from a piece of wood or some kind of boulder that you drive over. But while we go ahead, I talked about extra power. Let's pop the hood on this Rock Creek Edition and find out. All right, guys, we got the hood pop. Now, comparing this to the Explorer and the Grand Cherokee L, you do get a prop rod. It's not too bad. It's, it's far enough out of the way on the passenger side. Tasteful engine cover on this Pathfinder. But what do we got underneath? We got a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 now pumps out 295 horsepower, 270 pound-feet of torque. So more horsepower, more torque than your standard Pathfinder. Now, if you're comparing this to a Grand Cherokee L or the Ford Explorer Timberline, Ford Explorer Timberline, you're stuck with the four-cylinder EcoBoost. So that's a 2.3-liter inline Ford turbocharged engine. Grand Cherokee L, you could go V6, you could go V8. This has that nine speed automatic. So thank God they got rid of the CVT because the previous generation of the Pathfinder had a CVT. Zero to 60 with that automatic transmission, 6.5 seconds, top speed, 120 miles an hour. The vehicle weighs 4,481 pounds, MPGs, 21 in the city, 26 on the highway. And guess what? It actually has 6,000 pounds towing capability with this vehicle and of course the off-road tuned suspension as well which is really going to make this handle the rocks and the bumps a little extra compared to your standard pathfinder but why don't we go ahead let's fire up this v6 and hear if we could see if we could hear the extra horsepower
All right, guys, the birds are chirping, and we're in this Rock Creek edition. We're going to get ready to go camping and fire up a nice flame for some s'mores. That sounds good right about now on a hot floor today. Not. Anyways, I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I like this Rock Creek edition. You're right. It does not look like a jelly bean anymore. I love the way it's got a nine-speed automatic. The big question is, how much is it? So official pricing is not available yet, but expect this to kind of slot in right around $47,000 MSRP for this particular edition. Let's see how it stacks up to the Jeep and the Ford to the door panels. I like the clean style. Soft touch material up top. You got that bright orange stitching that's part of the Rock Creek edition stitch work on the interior. Everything else is flat black plastic, so you don't have to worry about fingerprints, the armrest is nice and soft. Door pocket is a good size. You could easily get two bison burgers and a bottle of goat's milk to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, love the soft touch material, more of that orange stitching. You actually have this Twinkie tray to fit three Twinkies and it says Pathfinder and it's got grippy texture so your Twinkies don't slide all over the place. Center stack, what do we have on the Rock Creek Edition? You get the standard infotainment system. It's an eight inch system, sort of like that floating iPad style, a lot of gloss black around it, but you really shouldn't be touching this portion unless you kind of miss the spot because we do have touch screen, which is great, but if you touch here, you're just gonna get nothing and you're gonna get fingerprints. So those are your different screens that you could go through. You can move around the widgets if you want. The best part is the camera. So I'm gonna hit camera button there's our camera out the front with trajectory, our 360. I like the high resolution. If you don't wanna see the 360, you then just hit it again. Bam, look at this. Check out those 18 inch wheels. Bam, there we are out front. And then I'll throw it into reverse. Really nice. The resolution is what's gonna blow your mind away with that quality. Now working your way down, nice easy to reach start stop button. We do have dual climate control on the switch gear, and you do have heated seats, three stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats. In the little cubby area, you got a couple extra places for at least six more Twinkies. There's a 12 volt, a USB-C, and a USB-A way down in there. And then on the bottom portion, we got plenty of room with this floating center console area. So you have this bridge, and that's where you're gonna be able to put your sack, your bag, your satchel, your purse, a purse, whatever you got, you could put it down there. Two cup holders. We have a nice place for four atomic fireballs. Make sure you only put one ball in your mouth at a time for those atomic fireballs. We got the new, updated, improved key fob. The Nissan key fob doesn't look like that little tiny pointy thing that would poke you in the family jewels. We do have uh, remote start, which is great. You do have your different modes. And we got hill descent control, very similar to the off-road mode in the Frontier Pro 4X. I'll show you more of this when you come to the business end. Pathfinder name, in case you forgot what you bought. Rock Creek Edition embroidery. Open it up. You got a little place for some Aladdin's Castles, Castles game tokens. And you got enough room in there for a small bust of Abraham Lincoln that you whittled out of a piece of wood that you found while you were in your Rock Creek Edition and you were camping. So you could keep that whittled piece of wood that is Abraham Lincoln's head that you shaped, keep it in there and it's not gonna get damaged. Close it up, the seats. You got that soft material, the Rock Creek embroidery, some grippy cloth in the center. Even the bolstering is real nice. Manual adjustment for the passenger, but guess what? Being the captain, I have electric assist and there's plenty of headroom. What's a big zonk? Old fashioned non-LED interior lighting. What is going on here? Why do we have that in this vehicle in model year 2023 is beyond me. I think Thomas Edison is probably rolling over in his grave right now. But why don't you come on over here? Come roll over here. I wanna show you a flat bottom steering wheel in our Pathfinder Rock Creek Edition. Come on. All right, guys, we're inside the business end of things. You do have your seat controls, easy to get to, that lower lumbar, which is nice. Of course, they give you all-weather 
floor mat protection, Pat Finder style, so you don't bring a bunch of mud in and mess up the carpet in here. Seats are comfy. I like the actual, the two different types of material. Plenty of headroom, no sunroof. Let me know how you feel about that. Steering wheel though, like I said, I promised you a flat bottom steering wheel. Here it is, flat bottom with the orange stitching. I like the way they kept that theme throughout. You got your new Nissan badge, some dark chrome, some flat black, and then you have paddles behind the wheel to go up and down that nine speed automatic transmission, manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then the dash is a little bit of new and a little bit of old. So you have your analog gauges and then you have your digital display in the center, which you could go through a cornucopia of information. So that's really nice to just have set up super easy to figure out. There's our four by four intelligent all wheel drive system. And then the one thing that I think is missing in here, besides the sunroof and ventilated seats, I guess the third thing that's missing is no head up display. But why don't we go ahead, let's get in the back seat and see what your passengers are going to be experiencing as you're driving down your favorite rock creek in your path. All right guys, mid row time, because remember, this is a three row, just like the Cherokee, Grand Cherokee L and the Ford Explorer Timberline. Back here, you got some nice room. Now the problem is, is that this is as far as the seats go back. So I don't know how you feel about that. I got plenty of leg room. I just would like to go back a little bit further. You do have captain's chairs. The only one that doesn't get a zonk on the armrest is the Explorer. This is just too skinny for a human arm. So gonna zonk that, but I love the material just like up front, backs of the seats, that soft material, nice large door pockets easily put two goat cheese calzones so when you're out camping out in colorado that's like one of their specialties is a goat's cheese calzone get two of those back there in the back portion you got your controls for the rear ac obviously raise and lower the temperature fan speed you got a usb c usb a and if you're wondering well joe where are the air vents they're actually all the way up here I don't mind them being up there. I just wish there was a second set on the frame just so I could kind of have some air here, some air here. You got a little tiny sort of, I guess you would call it center console area, two cup holders, there's gloss black. So get ready for the fingerprints and you could easily slide, I would say a box of bagel bites in there. So if you're not into the goat cheese calzone, I get it. I know it's not for everybody. Get yourself a box of bagel bites. I used to eat those up like they were going out of style back when I was in high school. And then I wanna show you, I wanna finish off with two different things. First of all, I showed you, we got a sliding seat. Does it recline? Yes, it does. And it does a good job of reclining. You ready for the last magic trick? Hocus Pocus, Alakazam, one, two, three. removable center console. So if you need to get something long in here or say you wanna free up the room, you could just take this and just give it to somebody and say, here, get rid of it. And that frees up that whole area. But while we go ahead, let's get into the third row and see if there's an actual possibility of a human sitting back there in some type of comfortable fashion. Let's go find out. All right, guys, we're in the third row. Here's my hand just to prove that I'm back here. Now, I just wanted to show how this seat goes forward. What I love about it is you could actually keep your child seat attached to this mid-row chair and still get it up and out of the way. That's smart engineering. Now, getting back here wasn't too bad. I did have to move this seat forward. So if you're as tall as me, and if you're wondering, well, how tall are you, Joe? I'm six feet tall. If you have somebody sitting here, you're gonna to have to slip them a 20. You're gonna to have to give them 20 bucks to move up and just give you a little bit of leg room. I've been in worse. I've been in better as well, but my knees aren't too high. They're still too high that I wouldn't wanna go for a three hour drive with you. But to go to the movies or something like that, short little drive, this isn't too painful. I like the way they brought the material all the way through the rear row. Cause if you look at other brands, sometimes they go really cheap on the rear seats. The one thing that kind of bothers me, at least on this trim, no USBs, no connectivity. I do have cup holders and AC vents, which are nice. So I don't die back here. 
But why don't we go ahead, let's get into the cargo area and see how it stacks up to the Jeep and the Ford in this Pathfinder. All right guys, time to show off the cargo area. Obviously a very important part with any SUV. Hit the button, you're gonna have to use your muscles. Hopefully you ate your spinach like Popeye. You lift it up, what do we got? Plenty of room, even with the third row up. So you got about 18 cubic feet of space with the third row up. When you go Rock Creek Edition, you're getting all weather protection, not only on the floor mats, but also the cargo area. You wanna see a little magic trick? Watch this. Love the way the Nissan engineers were able to put this cargo area. Now the bummer is you can't use it as a cooler. There's no drain plug, but you could easily fit, I would say 78 and a half Twinkies in this nice dry storage area in the back. To put the seats down, it's actually pretty simple and it's all manual controls. First, you wanna do this, drop the headrest, boom. Now the next step, that's all you got to do. You just come on over, pull it up the lever and you push it down. There's our protection on the back of the seats. And then of course that mid row will fold down as well. And the great news is to pull it back up, you don't have to worry about electric motors. You just use your muscles. Boom, that's it. One, two, three, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But you know what? It's about that time. If you're ready, I think this Rock Creek edition is ready. Let's go on throttle in this 2023 Pathfinder. All right, guys, we're inside this 2023 Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek edition. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle. On throttle, here we go. The four x four all wheel drive system gets the power down very nicely. And it's great to not only see more horsepower, but also more torque. Now, yes, this vehicle is meant for the off-road, but the suspension work that they did also helps on road when the pavement gets all ripped up into this left hand bend here nice and smooth on throttle here we go i really like the shifts from the nine speed automatic it allows you to definitely feel more engaged with the drive and you do have paddles like i said behind the wheel to go up and down that nine speed automatic. But as you can see, even with the off-road tires, handles superb. And I really like how easy it is to drive this Pathfinder, especially compared to some of the other larger three row SUVs. But we're on this tighter back road and it feels really great how they have everything set up suspension wise. And what's surprising is is that there's not too much extra road noise with the all-terrain tires. A lot of times when you go all-terrain tire, you're gonna get a bunch of road noise. Not so much with these, it's a nice balance. We're gonna do some off-roading here, and this is really what this Pathfinder is all about. I have it in sand mode, and we have definitely found a big sandy area, and this is what this particular Pathfinder is going to bring to the table is allow you to go off the beaten path a little bit more effectively than in your standard Pathfinder. So having that suspension lift, the off-road tires, as you can see, really makes light work of this off-road little area that I found. And it just allows you to be able to go a little bit further off the un, you know the unpaved road area where you live and this isn't a rock crawler by any means but at least it allows you to have that capability to do what you need to do to get to that place to put your kayak or your canoe in maybe where it's a little further off roading than what you would normally experience but as you can see here just really makes this kind of work easy, especially with having the different modes. The sand, the mud, the rut, the snow, or auto. Very easy to do. You can see the suspension doing its work here. And just allows that four by four action to take place. That's really the great news here. Look at this. Really, really nice. Yeehaw! <laughs> 
but definitely something I kind of just wanted to showcase because like I said, this is not meant to be a rock crawling vehicle. This is meant to just go a little bit further off-road than maybe you might do in a standard SUV. That's what this is all about, especially with the reshaped front bumper and everything else. But as you can see here, just smooth on pavement. And then when you wanna go off-road, one, two, three, there you are. There we go. <laughs> Makes easy work of this so simple. But hopefully this has been a nice overall review for you, whether we're going off-road or on-road or a little bit of both. I'm gonna put it back. We're actually gonna go into sport mode here. That's gonna adjust everything very nicely. Give us nice quick throttle response and a little bit heavier steering. All right guys, it's been another great day with this Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek Edition. I definitely wanna thank everybody at Nissan USA for getting us access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Has Nissan done enough, not only to the Pathfinder, but this Rock Creek Edition, or would you rather go Jeep Grand Cherokee L or the Ford Explorer Timberline? Let me know what your decision is in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Definitely got to give it to the man on a mission, Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. Check him out on Instagram. He takes some pretty good pictures. Let him know what you think about his videography skills in that comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.